Hey YouTube, <laughs> we got a windstorm. Oh, 400 watts. Oh, 500 watts. Damn. Okay, bear with me, I gotta drop the legs on the tripod. Yeah, I was excited to see that. We've had wind now for a good 18 hours it's been like this. Um, we have had a, a wind advisory in effect since... I don't want to say it's been in effect that long because it hasn't. Uh, but it has been breezy most of the day. There we go. Now we're situated. Apologize for all the crap moving around in the beginning there. Um, but it's been pretty, pretty windy. I mean, we've had wind gusts up over 30 mile an hour. Steady, sustained winds. You can probably hear it in the background. Sustained winds between 15 and 25. Power still on. Look at that. Look at that. You see how fast them amps jumped up? Look at that. It's amazing. It's amazing. I actually had to come out here this morning. I was videotaping a little bit because we were having 25 to 35 mile an hour winds. I, uh... I got a little bit of footage of it, but it was right when I woke up. It was like 7 o'clock in the morning I came out. Um, and I, because I came out to check the temperature of the rectifier. And it's, it's a lot cooler now than it was. I actually had to come out here and back it out away from the wood because I just didn't want to risk it, you know. There's no airflow in the garage except for when the door's open. And even with the door open, there's no wind blowing in here. It's, it's just quiet. So I came out and hooked a fan up to it. I'll show you what I got going on there. The fan is actually directly connected to the output of the rectifier. See those two little wires there. And I just took a... Stuck a I can't even talk. I stuck a screw in it just to hold it in place just to cool the rectifier down a little bit. But it, it's cool now, it's really cool to the touch. Um, everything's kind of jerry-rigged right now, but I do have a, I do have something that I'm looking into doing. Oh, let's see what kind of winds we get here now. Good. Watch it, watch it, ready. Look at that, do the math. Tell me how many watts that is. That's a DC watts, okay? That's not AC watts. AC watts were consistently putting between 100 and 500 watts. You know, we get the strong gusts. It, uh, it, I think the highest I had was 857 watts or something like that. It was a really strange number. Um, let's see, the kilowatt meter. 1.27 kilowatt hours in 97 hours 49 minutes. Uh, no batteries hooked up to this. This is strictly grid tied. Uh, but I do have a capacitor I added to the system. It's only temporary because I've been testing it out to see if it'll handle the voltages. I think this is a 20 volt cap. But it's a 1 farad car audio capacitor. See, I got a temporary hooked up here with some jumper cables. But it's it's pretty big. It's, uh, you know, physically a good size. It's about a foot long. It's got plus and minus screw terminals, which I'm just clamped onto right now. Because it's just giving me some smoothing capabilities. Now, I do have this one. I got this one from work. This was... Uh, No, not, I didn't get this one from work. Where did I get this one from? Well, I ordered this on eBay. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. 
It's a 42,000 microfarad capacitor. And that's, that one's rated at 60 volts, but this one wasn't really giving me the smoothing that I wanted. Um, I had, now, the big one there that you're seeing, I had that one. I've had that one for probably 15 years. It was in my old car on my audio system. That's what that was for. It's a lightning audio, one farad cap. Um, and it seems to do the, it does a really nice job at smoothing out the power coming from the solar panel and wind turbine. Uh, right now, there's not a lot of sun. It's mostly cloudy. Very windy, as you can probably hear. Look at this. Look at that. 22 volts times 30 amps. Oh, there we go. Here's another one. Like, I mean, mega wind today. Like, it's awesome. Freaking awesome. I'm loving it. Uh, what I had done was I actually moved that little inverter. If you've watched any of my other videos, <clears throat> you know that I have a DC to DC voltage reducer hooked up with this system. It's rated 24 to 60 volts. And what it does is it converts 24 to 60 volts down to 12 volts, 10 amps. And the way I, have it, I, the way I had it set up, it was going directly to the rectifier from the wind turbine and when it hit 26 volts or whatever it would activate a solenoid right there and it would disconnect the 500 watt inverter so I'm only running on the 1000 watt inverter okay because the two inverters are different voltages but what I've noticed is that I'm actually not generating enough power to really do anything the turbine's just kind of sitting there freewheeling um, when I would activate when I had a hook directly to the uh, bridge rectifier from the turbine. So what I did was I actually took the ground side of it and I connected it to the dump load terminal, the negative side of the dump load on the 500 watt inverter. So when that inverter goes into overvolt, it will actually activate that gray box and it's basically turning the thousand watt inverter into the dump load and it, so far it's been working I'm actually generating a lot more power because when it does overvolt the 500 watt inverter the thousand watt inverter is actually running at like max um, it's running really good so let me let me disconnect the 500 watt inverter now I want to see what this will do with this gust coming in See, there's just not enough wind really to uh, that's a 12 volt fan by the way and I'm pushing 22 volts into it <laughs> there are a dime a dozen I got a shitload of them I don't care if I burn it up see I mean that's that's pretty strong winds and it's just not it's just not making the same kind of power that I am with the little inverter and that's 22 volts 12 amps and if I go back to this one it's consistent. Now, don't get me wrong, it is very consistent. There we go. Now, that's the 500 watt inverter kicking in. Uh, it looks like it's doing it really, really well when I, with that 500 watt inverter. And that actually holds the wind turbine back quite well. I never have to worry about it, you know, freewheeling and overspinning on me and doing any sorts of damage to the pole or the wind turbine. Now, I got to get the pole guy wired because I did notice that it's. It does flex a lot with this wind turbine on it. But uh, I've been making some pretty good power today. I mean, 1,280 kilowatt hours, 1,280 watt hours. Yeah, not 1,280 kilowatt hours. That would be awesome. Uh, 1,280 watt hours. And that was all generated in almost 98 hours. And that's all wind, no solar. I do not have solar hooked up today. Uh, I'm actually charging some batteries with it right now, so it's it's not really doing anything because there's not much sun, but it's trickle charging some uh, 
lawnmower batteries I got sitting on the side. But uh, yeah, wind is really good today. I'm really happy. Look at that. Mm. This thing's been pushing 500 watts easy. Pretty nice. Uh, I haven't had to come out here to hit the brake, which I won't when it's this kind of wind. I'll just I'll load it up with something. I'll load it up with a uh, load resistor or something like that. I would, if I got strong winds, I would never smack that brake on because that, that's just killer. I mean, if anything, I, I'm probably going to rework the brake switch. I'm thinking about reworking the brake switch. I'm actually thinking about putting like a some sort of wireless uh, actuator or something like low current, low voltage up on there with a manual furling tail. Something that I can actually hit a button and furl the turbine out of the wind if I ever needed to. But this is usually the strongest winds that we would get any time of the year. And it's it's handled the 40 mile an hour wind gust beautifully. Look at that. Look at that. 500 watts. There we go. There's 400. Almost 500. Probably like 480. And it hits it really no problem. It, hit, it doesn't have a hard time hitting that at all. It's a pretty sweet ass wind turbine, I tell you. And it's quiet. I don't hear it up there humming away like I did some other one that was up there. Like the last, well, you'll see the last video. Yeah, this one doesn't make any noise. It's quiet. It's consistent. It has nice low wind startup. It has uh, it, the cut in speed is a low wind. I think with my grid tie setup, about eight mile an hour, it'll actually start generating power. I did notice that it's starting to generate electricity a little bit sooner now that I added that capacitor in there. Uh, I'm actually going to clean this setup a little bit better, clean it up a little bit more. Well, you know what? That was actually holding pretty good with that. Now, a 500 watt inverter is disconnected. See, that's. It's just not. So this big cap, I don't know if it's. I know it won't handle that stuff very long, so I don't like to give it that kind of power. Now, this little one. The Sprague power little capacitor, it's it's so little. It's tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. There you go. 60 volt DC, 42,000 microfarad. I believe that's microfarad. UF. That's the symbol for microfarad, right? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Just correct me. 20 bucks I think I paid for this little guy. And this one is the one I'm going to incorporate into the new electrical system. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a change. Uh, this power inverter, or not power inverter, this voltage reducer does not get hot. Even when I was drawing 5 amps through it, it wouldn't really ever get warmer than warm to the touch. And that, that was even on a golf cart with constantly being used. It just, it just didn't get hot. So I'll probably mount that. Uh, the relay, the new, the meters, fuses, this the small capacitor. Um, and any if I add anything else, and I don't know what I would add in, but. I'm going to add, incorporate all of that stuff into a larger, the larger Carlin box. 
the Carlon box. One of these that I got these meters in now, these are all going to get moved into that 12 inch by 12 inch one. Um, just so that way I can get everything hidden. I want everything concealed. And I'll put a little fan in there so there's airflow, just in case that inverter or voltage reducer gets warm. It won't start building heat up inside that thing. There There's another big gust. See, and I like staying on top of the meter so you can see exactly what I'm getting here. You can see the little itty bitty lines. Yeah. So, but once that all happens, I'll have a... Uh, an update for you. I'm even gonna put the I'm even I might even if I can fit it all in there I might even put an outlet in there with the the kilowatt meter like underneath or right next to the DC meters so that way we can see everything right next to each other you can see what I'm generating the outside of the box will have all <clears throat> different lugs for different connections because I'm going to have less wire clutter. That's really the goal. I want to kind of shrink the clutter of the wire. <clears throat> I'm going to use copper tubing. High grade copper tubing basically. And oh, a tree branch is falling down out there. And make it uh, be able to withstand extremely high amperages, amperages that I know that are never going to be able to go, th or never going to go through the system, but I want it to be able to handle it. I'm going to set it up also so I can jumper cable down to a battery pack, charge a battery pack bank with it. Um, you know, I'm just going to make it like a a plug and play system where it'll charge the batteries but the batteries won't back feed into the inverters but they'll still be there for you know in case the power goes out my biggest thing is if the power goes out and I get winds like this this is usually the only way the power would go out I gotta have some way of providing fail safe for the wind turbine here we go here we go 400 come on Almost 500 watts. Look at that. 390 on the AC side. At least that's what I caught. But once I get that project going, I'll, I'll keep you in the loop on it. I'll show you some video as I go through the project. And uh, I might even incorporate... <coughs> excuse me. Oh. Might even incorporate the brake switch into it. So that way it's not a, a big deal. I don't have all this mess on here. See, I don't know yet. If I can, it's the rectifier that I got to keep on the outside. That's the that I don't I don't want that enclosed in anything whatsoever because I know what that'll do. That'll get hot and that'll start melting something, and then you got a fire. Like the the in inverters, these grid tie inverters, I'm not going to enclose. They're going to be outside. I'm not even going to stack them one on top of the other because I just don't. I don't know. I just, I just don't trust anything getting hot that close to each other. Because I know what heat and electronics do. They fight each other, and heat usually wins. And when heat wins, you, the electronics are dead. But, well, that's all I'm going to do for now. I didn't realize how long this video was getting, but that's the wind I have today. And I have other video that I shot earlier I think I might incorporate in. I'm going to cut a lot of this junk out of here. So you'll get to see, I'm going to check through the video and stuff, but all right, YouTube, thanks for watching. I'm going to go and enjoy my free electricity.